This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for March 18, 2023, med service employees at the Norman Manley International Airport Restive. Med service employees stationed at the Norman Manley International Airport are reportedly restive. General Secretary of the Union of Technical, Administrative and Supervisory Personnel, St. Patrice Ennis, confirmed that the forecasters are staying off the job to protest the poor working conditions. Speaking with the news on Friday afternoon, Mr. Ennis said the workers had communicated their challenges to the responsible permanent secretary last week but are yet to receive a response. Mr. Ennis said the protest is just at the Norman Manley International Airport, but he warned that if matters are not addressed, it may spread elsewhere. The workers have been relocated to another section of the airport and are reportedly upset about their current working conditions. They say their new location is unsuitable for carrying out their functions. This has resulted in the disruptions in the delivery of daily forecasts. Speaking with the news last week, Matthew Samuda, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, said a talk so would be held shortly to address the issues raised by the workers. UK is to meet with security guards about their employment status after April 1. The Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees is to meet with security guards on Saturday to discuss their fate after the April 1 date for transition to employee status. UK's President Vincent Morrison has insisted that the government cannot leave the workers unprotected and at the mercy of the employers. He said employers have been writing to the guards, advising them that there will be changes to their terms of employment come April 1 to include being transferred to a new company. Mr. Morrison said there is still some confusion as to the benefits including vacation leave due to the guards or whether their past service will be transferred when they are transitioned from independent contractors. But they have not said to them, your services, the past services will be transferred. They have not said anything to them about their legal vacation leave entitlement. So the guards are confused. As a result, they hold a meeting, a mass meeting tomorrow with the guards at their offices to explain to them what is the legal and what ought to have been done. So here again, I am disappointed that the Labour Ministry has not stepped in, called both the, the, the guards and their representatives, along with the marketing companies, to explain the whole issue. Because we all know that when a company changes its name or is sold to another company, the workers have rights. And one of those rights is there to so let the service they have provided to the company. McLean, eager to clear name, says attorney following Mocha Raid. Officers from the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency on Friday morning searched the residence of interdicted acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Grace McLean. Dr. McLean's premises was one of nine searched as the probe intensifies into allegations of impropriety by the civil servant. Major Basil Jarrett, director of communications for MOCA, told the news that the agency and the Financial Investigation Division conducted search and seizure operations at the locations in connection with an ongoing investigation into operations at the Ministry of Education and the Joint Committee for Tertiary Education. Attorney at law Peter Champagne Casey, who is representing Dr. McLean, said his client cooperated fully with the investigators. Mr. Champagne said his client maintains her innocence and maintains the fact that she did not do anything unethical or illegal, so she is eager to have her name cleared. The attorney noted that the interdiction stems from claims by persons associated with the ministry that regulations were not followed in relation to the transfer of millions of dollars. He said his client had the opportunity to respond to those issues in writing, but is yet to get a response from the relevant authority. Additionally, Mr. Champigny said that there has been no word on the recommendation for a surcharge to be applied to force Dr. McLean to repay the more than $100 million. I spoke to her early this morning and she was indicating that they were there and that, you know, at that time, certainly at that time, 
there were no complaints in terms of their approach and there was no complaint from the authorities that there was any hindrance on her part. Her position has not changed. She maintains her innocence and maintains um, the fact that she did not do anything unethical or illegal. So it is a process that is, is on the way. I'm not particularly surprised and we will see where it leads to. And I would want to say that, and I am saying, that my client had an opportunity in writing to uh, respond to all of those issues. And we are yet to hear from the relevant authority in terms of our response. It was a recommendation. It wasn't instituted. It was a recommendation uh-huh. and an opportunity was given for us to respond in writing as to why it is that there would have been no basis for that recommendation. And we, within the timeline, mm-hmm. responded on her behalf. And to date, we have not gotten a response in relation to that. Cabby's shooting death drives a fear into colleagues. They carried passengers from Washington Boulevard to other sections of the city, staged a protest Friday against the Thursday's murder and suspected robbery of colleague Courtney Clark. The taxi operators who did not hide that they are scared asked for prayers as they spoke of the dangers while transporting passengers. They said close to noon on Thursday, Clark was sitting in his white Toyota Probox motor car on Washington Boulevard, close to the Boulevard Shopping Center when gunmen shot him before escaping on foot. A small gathering of Clark's colleagues standing near where he was killed demanded that a gunmen and the thieves stop targeting them. According to a man who gave his name only as Leonard, a taxi operator on the halfway tree to Duhaney Park route, taxi men were scared before Thursday's killing but are now far more afraid than before. But don't scared already and now me extra scared. We are working in fear as we transport hardworking Jamaicans Lack of knowledge caused it to kill your black brother. We see the changes in the people. Please don't make me be so fearful. It come in like randomly, anyone that we can just dead innocently, he said. The slain cab operator, he said, was loved as no one had anything bad to say about him. We heard that people were trying to rob him and he probably put up a resistance. They shot him and run off. I did not even go back to work after the incident, Leonard said. According to Egerton Newman, President of the Transport Operators Development and Sustainable Services, another taxi operator had also been killed a Thursday night on Windward Road in Kingston. Newman said it is time now for public transport operators to embrace a cashless system to limit the likelihood of them being robbed. The gunmen are going after cash. Taxi operators keep $10,000, $15,000 and $20,000 in their pockets and between their fingers and the gunmen know this. We need a cashless system. Since 2008, we have been discussing a cashless system, Newman said. He added, the sector has been turning a blind eye to it and it is hitting home more forcefully now. We have to go look at that and see how best we can work on something. Since the start of the year, we have lost 10 operators. We lost 57 last year and if we continue on the same trend, we are going to get to over 100 operators by the end of the year. It is not easy to investigate the causes of some of these deaths. If the person was robbed, we consider it a robbery. In most of these cases, the operators were emptied of their cash and their vehicles were taken away. A stakeholder in the public passenger vehicle industry who requested anonymity claimed that there may very well be the possibility that some operators are involved in illegal activities. Some taxi men are not as clean as you would anticipate. Some of them are one-day drivers and they are involved in activities otherwise, the source said. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.